we want to consider the following reaction. And they've provided us with delta H and delta S, and they want us to calculate delta G at a specific temperature. And then we need to determine whether the reaction is spontaneous. Finally, once we have that, does delta G become more negative or more positive as the temperature increases? So let's start with what we know we have to do. We know our temperature has to be in Kelvin. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert it to Kelvin. So my temperature is going to be 273.15 plus 25. So that will be 298.15 Kelvin. And then what is the formula for delta G? Well, I know that delta G equals delta H minus T times delta S. Well, hey, I know delta S and I know delta H and I just found T, so all I need to do is a plug and chug. Now, when you do the quote plug and chug, remember the units are different for delta H and for delta S. So I need to either put everything in joules or everything in kilojoules. The preference is to go to joules. So you need to go ahead and convert negative 137.5 kilojoules into joules, so there's a thousand joules in one kilojoule. So this would be minus 137500 joules. So now I can literally do that. So I've got delta H, which is what we just found. So that's going to be minus 137500 minus the temperature that we just found, which is 298.15 Kelvin times delta S, which is the minus 120.5 joules per Kelvin. So far so good, right? So I'm going to do the multiplication and then I'm actually going to subtract it and that's going to give me minus 101.572.925 joules. Now, how many significant figures do I need? Well, this number has four and this one has four, so we went one, two, three, four. That seven tells us that we're going to round up, so this is going to equal to negative one point zero one six times ten to the fifth joules. So there's the first portion. So there's what delta G is. Now it says, is the reaction spontaneous? And the answer is yes right? It is spontaneous. Now if you can't remember why, remember there's this awesome chart to help you kind of figure that out um, in your book. And as you do more and more you're going to notice that. So when I have that delta H is negative and then I know that delta S was what? Also negative. I know that delta G will be less than zero at a low temp and greater than zero at a high temp. So this is considered a low temp. So the next question says does it become more negative or more positive as the temperature increases? And as I just said, at a high temperature, delta G is greater than zero when both of these are negative, so it's going to become a more positive number.